It was a major speech for Donald Trump, an attempt to clarify where he stands on immigration, the issue that electrified his supporters early in the campaign. There will be no amnesty. Our message to the world will be this. You cannot obtain legal status or become a citizen of the United States by illegally entering our country. Can't do it. Outside his Phoenix rally, protesters gathered as Trump outlined a 10-point plan, including a promise to return all detained undocumented people to their home countries, and then said they'd have to reapply for entry to the U.S. Trump repeated his pledge to adopt a policy of extreme vetting, which would include ideological testing. And yes, he would build a wall along the Mexican border. I am going to create a new special deportation task force focused on identifying and quickly removing the most dangerous criminal illegal immigrants in America who have evaded justice, just like Hillary Clinton has evaded justice, okay? Maybe they'll be able to deport her. Trump was joined on stage by a group of so-called angel moms. They'd all had loved ones killed by undocumented immigrants. Maureen Maloney of Milford was one of them. Her son, Matthew Denise, who'd recently graduated from Framingham State University, was struck by this man, Nicholas Guaman, a native of Ecuador who was driving drunk and had run a red light. Our son, Matthew Denise, was 23 years old when he was dragged a quarter of a mile to his death by an illegal alien. Well, horrified witnesses were banging on a truck trying to stop him. Of course, this speech came just after Trump had met with the president of Mexico. So with these high-profile events, did Trump satisfy conservatives without alienating more centrist voters? The response from Democrats is what you would expect. Here's vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine. This is the central piece of his campaign, immigration and deportation, and we're going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. But when he looked President Peña Nieto in the eye, he couldn't even bring that up. That was a choke, and I think it shows that diplomacy is not for amateurs. Donald Trump's an amateur. So there's a lot to discuss here, both policy and politics. Joining me are Jessica Vaughn from the Center for Immigration Studies, Leila Halas, an associate professor at the BU University, pardon me, BU School of Law, and Marisa DeFranco, an immigration attorney. Uh, let me start with policy. Is the plan that Donald Trump sketched out last night, is it doable? I mean, if he is elected president, could he make happen what he says he's going to make happen? I think I see you shaking your head now. Yeah, no, um, it's impossible to to kind of summarily immediately deport um, 11 million people. Um, the government's put a certain amount of funds into the inf uh, Immigration Enforcement uh, Agency, and in fact, um, they've been deporting more people um, annually than any president um, in the past. And so they're using the full force um, of the Immigration Agency right now to deport um, more than 400,000 people people a year and so there, there's no way um, we'd be able um, to do that. Well, it, it is, no, it's doable, but I do want to, the, Obama, the administration fudges those numbers with the deportations because they're actually including expedited removals, which happen at the border, and they're folding those numbers into the deportation. So it's okay. artificial, Point, makes it artificially or, or objection noted, no, right. no. But it's doable. His plan is, if anything's doable if you want to allocate the funds to him. But I, it's hard for me to take him seriously, Adam, because the one thing you did not hear in his entire speech was going after the illegal employers. He mentioned e -verify. E-Verify is a joke. It's self-policing. It's not investigating. This is for people who might not know. This is the, why don't you right. describe it? You know better than it's me. It's an electronic version so the employer can look that person up and if they're not documented, then they're not supposed to hire them. It's basically an electronic I-9. But the employer is self-policing. If there's no audit, if the government's not coming in to investigate them, most employers are just going Got to it. wink, nod, wink and nod and Okay, so you don't there think it, it can be done. You don't think it uh, does what the, the, the most important thing, one no, of the most important his, things that needs to be done. What it's do you his think? tell. I, I do think it's very ambitious, but I, I think it can be done and it needs to be done. And 
Um, what he was talking about is restoring and repairing uh, our immigration system's integrity and that that has to start with enforcing the laws that we have first. And that's critical, both border security and also interior enforcement, because as Marissa said, we're hitting a 10-year low in uh, removals of people from the interior, deportations for people who've been living here. And the Obama administration has released hundreds of thousands of criminal aliens back to the streets rather than removing them, even though they say they're focused on criminal aliens. In fact, it's really only a portion of that that they've been going for. Let's so talk about, oh, go ahead. I we have a lot off. more capacity for enforcement than our government has been choosing to use. Got it. Uh, let's talk about political impact here for a little bit. I was looking at polls involving attitudes toward immigration uh, earlier today. I found one from July. It was an Associated Press poll. Uh, it said that six in 10 Americans oppose Trump's plan to build a wall along the border. Six in 10 support a so-called path to citizenship for people who are here illegally. So uh, I'm wondering if you think this speech uh, will help Trump woo the voters he needs to get to support him to win the White House. I do. I grew up in Pennsylvania in the Rust Belt. And what I think Democrats, at their peril, take too much glee in the current polls. Number one, they're tightening. But they're number two, I mean, they need to take a trip through the Rust Belt and see how it's been decimated. And those people, rightly so, have a lot of anger. And when they watch, illegal immigration is overtaking legal immigration. And it's bleeding in and feeding the chaos. And the, that poll is always, the question always asked is a binary question. Do you want to deport 11 million people or should we give them a path to citizenship? It's a false choice. So of course people aren't going to, they don't want to be mean. They're going to say path to citizenship. The third choice is if we do nothing, then people stay and the deportations happen slowly. A lot more, you'd see those numbers shift if the poll were actually so asked correctly. You see this speech as politically smart. Uh, you, I, again, I see, disagree. aren't quite buying it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not buying it. I, consistently, P Americans have said that they want, um, they understand it's a broken immigration system um, and they want a way um, to legalize the population. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm from the Deep South, actually. And, and you know, in, in our area, we're very appreciative um, of a lot of immigrants um, who so came to the rescue. from the Rust Belt, yeah. of course, but and, it's, it's and, 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 and I think not it's, equal racism you know, or xenophobia. Oh, well, I'm not saying that. No, I know I'm you're not, that do, a lot of other do people want, do. They do want um, there to be a pathway for someone that they've known for years and years and who've become a part of their family. They, and, you know, in On fact, an individual many, basis. That many Americans, in fact, have immigrants very close, you know, to their family. But sympathy um, is not a good way to Jessica, set policy. What they want really is for a, an immigration policy that puts the needs of our country and Americans first. And we've reached the point in immigration levels that Americans and legal immigrants are being disadvantaged not only by illegal immigration, but also by a, a lot of legal immigration. And that's what people want to see some balance for. But, but enforcement right. of the laws has to come first. But Our rules have to have meaning before we change them. Exactly. Sympathy is not a good way to set policy. Right. I, I absolutely I, agree We with feel that. sorry for a um, lot of people. I feel sorry for homeless people, but I'm not going to invite 100 of them to come and live in my house. Donald Trump told Laura Ingram, who is uh, very much a sort of a, a partner of his ideologically, in an interview today, that, that he has uh, shown and will continue to show a softening on immigration. A lot of people saw that speech last night, and whether they like his ideas or not, they, they didn't see any softening. Any of you see a softening? Oh, I definitely, because, um, well, he's no longer talking about all 11 million illegal aliens have to go, you know, in the first one, you know, in various short periods of time. That's never been realistic, and most people involved in the issue have never thought that that was a, a realistic approach and knew it was never going to happen. He's backed off of that a little bit, and I, I think that's a good thing. I think he's also backed off some of the harsher um, references to Mexico. He said he loves and Mexicans, no. loves the let's, Mexican let's, president. And that's important. But let's back and that up. That needed to be done. My, my position is that it's, he, it's not a flip. He's always been soft on immigration, and that's why I, I think that people are in for a rude awakening because he never, his number one tell that he's lying to me is that he does not talk about illegal employers. If you don't find them, take, take the numbers, give, give, give funding to enforcement, and you know why he doesn't? It's because he himself is an illegal employer. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. I apologize, Layla. Uh, Jessica Vaughn, Layla, Class, Marissa DeFranco, thanks to all of you.